We are hooked up. And the guy made me move the trailer. He says he couldn't come in from the side for some reason. He says not enough reach. He says move the excavator or... I said, wait, I can move the truck. And so I moved the truck away. And now we try to move it out of the snow. Yeah, at first the guy sounded like he didn't want to do it, you know, he said, oh, that's too much work. He said, I cannot get in there, <laughs> not enough space. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Can you not reach from the side? He says, no. Basically, yeah, that excavator was in the way and I could have moved it, but then I have to go and ask him for a key. And I know this guy was saying something about, about uh, hours. He doesn't want to add hours. Basically, he doesn't, he doesn't want to move that excavator from what I understand. And then I said, hey, let's, let me move the trailer and then you drag this out, right? And so we drag this in the middle of the yard, right? And he dis we disconnected the rear axle. And I, was, I made sure that I had this hooked up not to damage the airbags when he lifted it, right? And uh, yesterday, no, actually this morning, I was able to take two pins out. For some reason, the right side when this thing was parked, still part of the booster, I was able to take this pin out and this pin out. All right, and when the guy came in, uh, he moved it a little bit and I was able to take those pins out. And I disconnected the hoses on the night before. So now I just want to make sure there's no snow between the tires, otherwise they're going to screw up. See like this? Snow is going to screw up the balance. And it can, can damage the tires. Well, as long as there's like no ice, you know, but if you have ice, that's bad. But in this son of a gun, you know, like they, they always push snow like that and they bury, they buried my car once. So anyway, all I gotta do now is I gotta, I put the shims in because you need at least smallest shim like that. And now I just need to hook up uh, connect the, the pins and I, I I you know usually I put that I put the the shim on the outside but this is the first time I'm doing it like this after we welded this thing on right and this was in the way and I think with the shim, oh, maybe I can still put in the, no, I'm not gonna go in. Wait, which one is, because these are different. I need one, yeah, the longer one is for the bigger, for the bigger bottom pins. All right, so I'll just have to put this one like this. This one. All right, so now we have two more pins. So wait a second, I think on this side... Huh. 
I remember that I think when I used the. No, wait a second. the small yellow shims I think I was able to put the I was able to put the washer in but no there's definitely not enough space it's very tight No shims. All right. Now that we did that, the pins are in. Yeah, this was on the last axle. And you see, it'll be so much easier when I finally get that uh, extra axle because that one is intermediate and I'll be able to hook it up to the you see like right now the problem is Next time I need uh, to hook up even like say, like that one now, right? Right now that one is single booster, single axle booster. And you would think that next time I need a, I'm moving a big load, I should be able to hook up that to this, except you see this it doesn't have any deer, uh, eyes like that. So you need those eyes. So this is a final axle. So next time I need to hook up a booster or even a fourth axle, I have to call these guys again and take this off because again, this is the final axle. And either disconnect that one, put it in between or just take this off, hook up the booster and then put this on the back. It's a pain in the butt, you know, when you're just one guy. All right, now, this sometimes can be 
difficult, huh? But at least over here, it's easy to see which one is blue. Okay, red is... Red is this one. Right? That's red. Okay. Son of a... I didn't expect this. All right, that's red. Now, which one is blue? Blue is... Blue is this one. Now we just need to find out which one is blue on the other side. This one is black, that one is blue. Blue, right? Okay. So these are my brakes. When I push the pedal, this is what stops this from spinning. Okay. And this should be the black, which I have no idea what it does. Yeah, that's the black. But it's so much easier, you see, I, I redid this, right? So when these are at the top, it's so much easier. Like Fontaine really should look into changing this. Oh, actually these are my airbags. All right, so now I know. So the black is the airbags. Red is, of course, your parking brakes or emergency brakes that apply when there's no air in the airbags, you know, when some emergency happens. And blue is, of course, your service brakes that stop the wheels from turning when you push the brake pedal. And these are my lights. All right. Now it should be all connected. I really, I'm gonna change this one because it, it becomes really difficult to uh, drain the air. Basically, this part is all seized. So next time I'm at, uh, you know, I've been worried about that one for a long time. Because each time when I try to drain the air, when I was, you know, backing with a booster, that thing would take like half an hour to drain all the air. Whereas this axle, no, that axle works fine. So this is just too much moisture in winter. And so this is it. So now we have a seven axle rig which is quite capable of taking a 70,000 pound um, rock truck. Well, actually, I don't think it weighs 70,000. That's what my load confirmation said. But when I checked the specs online, it said uh, 
65.9 so 66 and those are my shims that were that I use on the booster all right I don't want to lose these just put them somewhere like this so my ace my empty ace is uh, set up so I can uh, move out to the border and so I'm, I need to reach I'm gonna reach first uh, Dansville Dansville New York well, last time I checked, fuel was three dollars a gallon U.S. And after that, I'm gonna go to Duncannon, PA, and shut down there for the night because Duncannon is only ninety ninety five miles away from Baltimore port and usually that's what I do because there's other truck stops in there like there's one at the very bottom of Pennsylvania but it's super small My Challenger with 500 horsepower and rear-wheel drive is perfectly suited for winter driving and snow, just not this much snow. Oh, you see, this guy, <laughs> this guy was able to back in. Shall we drive in or shall we back in? It's still pretty... The, the part in the middle. That's good enough. 
Yeah. Oh, barely touching the snow. So time now, nine o'clock. You see? And the guy left like 15 minutes ago. So it took less than an hour. Yeah, but at first I thought, shit, like we, we won't be able to do it, you know? I have to be in the port tomorrow. And this guy says, no, I cannot reach like that. You have to move the excavator. Like, uh, <laughs> I might, I might need to use the... Okay, I'm in first position. I might need to use the, the boards. Our trigger boards. Because they said that thing is almost 12 feet wide. So we might have a problem. Why, why does it do it like that? You know, you turn the key and all of a sudden, all of a sudden it stops. Check that we are on. Uh, are we on what cycle? Canadian or U.S.? Canadian. All right. And then once I get closer to the border, I'll uh, I'll change the cycle to U.S. because it's less hours. All right. So now it is going to go to pilot. Pilot in Fort Erie. Pilot near Fort Erie. Come on, you can do it. Open! 24 hours! Wow! It says 1 hour 31 minutes. Time now is 9. Well, 143 kilometers, so 90 miles. That's it. The rear, rear, rear axle diff unlocked. Unlocked. This was level of difficulty was probably three, but I'm telling you, I definitely see. Even though this, of course, is more money, 
then uh, remember when I had that guy with the crane but that crane was useless I'm telling you maybe these guys are more experienced I don't know but the, the last time the guy did the, the Jeep right it was so so uh, easy you know he was so careful oh because he has two chains maybe that's what helps you know like the crane has only one chain like this guy has two chains and like two rollers and he can control them independently you know which really helps like there's two chains and so he hooks up he can lift one side the other side the crane cannot do that you know with a crane you have to put it down make the short make the chain on one side shorter like this you know that's why these guys are expensive but uh, it's a really it's really worth the money you know and see one hour so it took them it took less than one hour to uh, to disconnect the flip axle from this no to pull out the spreader the stinger from the deep snow then disconnect the axle right and then reconnect to the trailer and put this thing back in its position so now we're back to the configuration how I started when uh, you know back in the day yeah all the wheels are spinning you know in winter always check that all the wheels are spinning especially after you had the red button pulled out because sometimes they freeze hold on I'm gonna change the angle from uh, super view to linear because I'm gonna be driving so I don't need 360 degree of view now see the difference now the angle of view became more narrow but this is also good for the camera because otherwise uh, when you shooting from inside the the vehicle oh that's a nice looking ramp the rims are kind of like on my challenger black or rather dark gray with white uh, white uh, coloring and that's the new style of ram So now yeah the plan is to uh, drive as slow as possible so that because it's 450 miles empty and then loaded miles are about 700 so the last fuel I burn the more money I make And so I was saying that yeah this reminds me of this reminds me of how I got started in heavy haul but actually when I bought my first uh, low boy trailer it was a Kaufman 55 ton I still had my regular truck like a uh, international truck And so max I had was six axles and that's not very useful right and actually the the Kaufman was set up for a flip axle and I asked him how much is the flip axle and they said 10,000 US 
which is way cheaper than what Fontaine wants uh, for a brand new 60 ton or 55 ton it's the same uh, flip axle Fontaine wants 16,000 US if it's a final axle and about 18 if it's intermediate axle the one with the uh, eyes on both sides and so those guys wanted 10 but everybody was telling me that something was not right with the eyes because you know I was talking to people at truck stops and stuff and uh, I said hey maybe I should buy you know like a flip axle what's the next step how I can increase my revenue and I remember one guy said well something is he says normally the, the pins he says they should be bigger like the, the the hole at the top in the top eyes was much more narrow than I had on my next trailer 55 ton Fontaine I don't know they used very small pins but of course now I know that it's the bottom pins that count like the top pins don't are not that important but still I had some suspicions about that you know and that's why and plus the axle spacing was 54 inches on the Kaufman and you get more weight per axle in many states especially in Canada here when your spacing is larger like 60 inches five feet and I like the sexy look of a drop side rail trailer right so that's why that I, I think uh, up to now that was my favorite trailer that 55 ton drop side rail it was super strong it was light and there was no messing with the Jeep and Stinger right and I had the, then later when I got that one and yeah that one had a 60 inch uh, axle spacing and so when I got that one I later uh, purchased a 23 inch uh, neck extension flip box and I was pretty much running with that one all the way down all the time even empty you know and then I had that flip axle and now I don't know why I bothered why I bothered flipping that axle all the time like now I have the annual permit at least in Ontario it allows me to uh, to drive even with the Jeep you know when I'm empty I can be as long as uh, 32 meters or 105 feet and I don't need any extra permits they just want me to to have the sides on you know I, I must have a uh, uh, oversized low on the front and rear even when empty because because of the uh, length and so this is it so now we're just gonna head over to uh, Port Huron I mean Port Huron uh, Buffalo New York cross the border uh, via Peace Bridge and then follow uh, I-90 East to Batavia And that's a toll road so I'm gonna pay a couple of bucks in uh, toll but it's much faster and then from Batavia I'm gonna take uh, New York 63 going southeast and then catch uh, I-390 and then enter uh, Pennsylvania on US 15 and keep following US 15 to to uh, Duncannon and that's the, the today's uh, goal is to reach to reach uh, Duncannon so I got all my chains I got outrigger boards I got my passport my phone my masks 
I got my ACE manifest printed out. You know, the, the piece of paper I have to show at the border. I got my wallet somewhere. And now we are at 50% uh, fuel in uh, both tanks. But that should be more than enough to uh, take me to uh, Dansville. I just hope Dansville did not increase the rate again from $3 US per gallon I saw last time. And I was supposed to have a protein bar. You know, that's my favorite uh, breakfast. I just have a coffee or tea with a protein bar, but I bought one for today, but then yesterday I was watching uh, some video on my on my uh, laptop inside the truck. For some reason I got depressed and I downed the protein bar. I'm sorry. And so this morning I just drove my Challenger to the ATM at 7 in the morning, got the uh, 200 bucks that I had to pay uh, to the wrecker guy. It's so basically this time they said that that's their lowest rate, 175 Canadian plus tax. And of course the tax in Ontario is 13%, uh, so 175 plus 13% is $200. And the guy says, well, you don't have to pay cash each time. Next time you can, you can use a credit card. I said, what about the check? And he said, yeah, we, t we can take a company check, company check. So the weather is good, plus three Celsius, uh, 36, 37 F. What is this, 278 Kelvin, I think. Took a, I took the exit for Highway 6. Highway 6 uh, South. We have the green arrow. Beautiful. Like over here, right? The pavement is dry. My parking lot is covered in one foot of snow. Yeah, the owner of there of that property, she has a problem with uh, with moisture there. When it's raining, there's always water standing on the ground doesn't want to go away but yeah driving like this you know it's it's such a pleasure when you have a short trailer and I see I was right when I when I decided to get rid of that drop side rail because I was losing loads I should have kept it, but you know, I was uh, I was losing loads with the when I was an owner operator, and so I wanted to get the same 55 ton with the level deck. And then I thought, wait a second, what about the 60 ton? Maybe I can just trade in 55 ton and get a 60 ton. And so, of course, I didn't have the Jeep I didn't have the stinger but I thought I'll just be using the 60 ton as a 55 ton for now but at least that will give me a option to add you know the Jeep and stinger later on and start hauling really big loads and of course I didn't expect the weight difference to be 7,000 pounds between the 60 ton and 55 ton 
but still you see now right i'm going and i'm, I'm gonna load uh, 70 000 pound or whatever 66 000 pound rock truck i i can still do it with just seven axles i don't have to bring the eight axle but something like a cat 336 or heavier i would need another axle whereas with my 55 ton uh, you know I was much lighter right I could have done it with seven axles but no big deal one more axle I just you know I have to pay somebody to to uh, flip them around but it still works you see it still works the previous load I just had to use a tandem right so now I need one more axle here we go it's still flexible so I, I I don't think I made a mistake with the 60 ton except that I feel almost I should have gotten a 60 ton with a drop side drill. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love that drop side drill thing because it's so much easier to load and many loads tend to be lower. So the center of gravity is lower, you know, so it's safer easier to load easier to unload because the angle is lower oh did i tell you guys i think i didn't tell you i was looking into a beam deck because i cannot sit still i'm always on the lookout for my next investment and forget stocks forget other people's businesses the best investment is in your own business trust me because you know your business you know how you can increase revenue or cut your costs right you know how to make yourself more profitable and so before I bought before I spend money on uh, somebody else's business like buying their stocks that I know nothing about just a couple of financial numbers I'd rather invest into my business right and that's what I've been doing uh, that's why I've been uh, changing trailers from a Kaufman 55 ton with three axles that couldn't do a lot of weight I switched to 55 ton Fontaine with 60 inch spacing then I got the neck extension because the truck was getting overloaded and then I got the uh, flip axle so now I had an 8 axle rig which was pretty good but then I started getting uh, I started losing loads with the drop side rail uh, so I decided to switch to 60 ton for future growth and I quickly discovered that when you know when you you are your own boss I can pick loads much more easier than when I was an owner operator so now actually I'm missing that drop side rail but the genius of Sergey Drachev was that somehow honestly I didn't plan this but I got a modular trailer right because most uh, 60 ton trailers are all modular and so that I, I did not appreciate that at first because that just me meant I had to use uh, deck shims all the time right I'm not a big fan but now I know that being modular this trailer can take a replacement decks right and so I've been looking into getting a, a drop side rail deck and then maybe selling this one because a drop side rail is about now the prices went up last year it was like 31,000 Canadian for my trailer now it's about probably 34 35 but then I can sell this deck at least for 10 grand but recently I've been getting a lot of requests uh, for for uh, a beam trailer and I know it's a lot of work I never used them before they look pretty scary but I called, uh, I emailed Fontaine, 
ask him for a quote. And it was like 33 or 34 grand US. Uh, 60 ton beam replacement deck, 28 feet long. 28 feet. Which is beautiful. Mine now is 26, right? And so then I emailed the local trailer builder and I said, what's your price? And yeah, last year he said 28,000. He said, now it's, uh, I think he said 33,000 Canadian, which is like 25 US, which is about $7,000 US cheaper than the Fontaine. But Fontaine is genuine deck, right? And um, it should be, it should fit without me having to go and uh, and uh, and get the trailer measured. And one guy told me yesterday. He said, "Be careful with these local builders because, yeah, they tell you it's this price. Let's say." 32 33,000 Canadian he says what they don't tell you is that there will be an engineering fee because your deck is different from their decks and and he says there'll be a few thousand dollars uh, fee for you know for them to having to customize one of their decks and you know you have to drive there to uh, have them measured everything and so that's one thing I did not, I did not go into details yet about. But like I said, I'm always looking for uh, next investment into my business, how I can make more money, right? So now I have a 60 ton trailer, I have a tandem Jeep, I have a booster, which at first didn't work properly, but but now it works. <laughs> hey, Caps is there with the radar. But my speed was 95, 15 over. The speed limit here is 80. But he. He's not gonna bother with hundred dollar fine. He's looking for somebody who's doing over a hundred. Because once you're over a hundred kilometers an hour, which is twenty kilometers over, that's when uh, that's when the the fines increase by like a factor of two. Oh no, or if somebody doing like 110, 120, you know, like 60, uh, what is it, like 70, 75 miles an hour, that's who he's looking for. So it's the same deal over here, right? As you, if you go on 401, the freeway, the speed limit is 100. Uh, if you, if you're st sticking to below 120, they don't, they don't bother you because that's how they drive themselves like that. So 15, 20 kilometers an hour in Ontario over is, is uh, normal, but the, the tolerance goes down with the lower speed limit. And I remember I used to live in a, in a I used to rent an apartment in a, in a private house and my neighbor also renting there, he was a cab driver. And one day he came over, he, said, he came home and we were talking and he was like very sad. I said, what, why are you, what happened? And he said, oh, I got a ticket today. He says, son of a gun, give me a ticket. I said, well, how fast were you driving? He says, 70, 77. And I said, what was the speed limit? He says, 50, you see? As soon as you go over 15 kilometers an hour, so 50 is what? It's like 30 miles an hour and he was doing 77, which is like 46, 47 miles per hour. They don't like it. When the speed limit is low, you have to stick to, to less than 15 kilometers or 10 miles over. 
and I remember one guy in the States told me, I, uh, uh, like a pilot driver, you know, he was escorting me, and I know these guys do a lot of miles, they drive all over the place, I said, and I was, I knew that he would know the answer, I said, so what's the safe, safe margin over the speed limit? And this guy was uh, ready with an answer like that. He said, nine miles an hour. I said, seriously, nine, not 10? He says, no, nine. He says, if you're at nine miles an hour over, they're not gonna bother you. So if the 60, if, if you're in a 65 zone, you don't wanna go above, uh, what, 74, right? And I remember that's how I got a ticket. In my challenge, I was driving in Buffalo, uh, 80 miles an hour, and the speed limit was 65. And the guy stopped me and said, hey, you have a very nice car, sir. I said, thank you, sir, you're very kind. So yeah, guys, so stick to nine miles an hour in the States or 15 in Canada and then you're gonna avoid tickets and by the way I've been driving I got my driver's license in Russia my first driver's license in 1984 which is 16 plus 20 32 years ago and in 32 years believe it or not this challenger thing this the ticket it's my first speeding ticket because I always watch my speed okay the Google says speed trap where's the speed trap uh, no it's not here so I'm guessing that guy that I saw before sometimes they sit here they just park over here on the side and because what they like to do and of course I don't think that's very fair they like to sit at the bottom of a hill like here the road goes slightly down so you tend to pick up speed right RV trailers you know everywhere and then quite often I see a for sale sign because these RVs are so expensive oh check this out a guy in a Volvo pulling a rock truck hold on you see this that's pretty much what I'm picking up a truck like that and this guy had the four axle trailer and I didn't catch how many axles his truck had. So 10 to 10. Time now is 10 to 10. I told the uh, US Customs when I was doing the manifest, I said, I'll be at the border, ETA to the border, you have to tell them. I said uh, nine o'clock and they give you six hours six hour window so they don't like it when you tell them that you're gonna cross at nine and you're not there until 5 p.m. so then you have to go online back to the website and you have to change your time of arrival you have to do like the edit I know how to do it, I did it a couple of times. But yeah, look at this weather, right? It feels like the spring is almost here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy was crossing the white line between our lanes. I'm guessing playing video games on a phone and now he's almost hitting the shoulder. He's going like this.
usually I see that when people are on the phone, you know? And of course I'm sitting high in a truck, right? Uh, and you know, you, you stop at, uh, you stop at a, a set of lights and <laughs> you can see inside people's cabs. And quite often I see people playing with their phones. here here's a tricky part like if I was a cop for some reason you never see them over here but at the top of a hill there's a set of lights but what's tricky here is that here the speed limit is 80 kilometers an hour but about halfway down there it turns to 60 or 40 or like 39 miles per hour Most people are flying there, you know, like let's say here you're doing 90, uh, okay, like a car would normally be doing here like 100 kilometers an hour, right? And then all of a sudden you're in a 60 zone, so now you're 40 kilometers over, you know? Like you see here? That's the sign, 60. So from here it's 60 kilometers over. So if I was a cop, I would be sitting over here and catching people that are doing 100 kilometers an hour because they're still trying to fly all right i'm sensing my gopro is going to to die soon so probably the last thing you'll be able to see i'll be recording till it it dies I know I still have battery, but what happens is that the uh, the memory card gets filled up. Yeah, the guy next to me has a Harley Davidson edition of uh, Ford F-150. What is that? A crew cab, I think, right? And in winter. Right, most people use uh, winter tires, but instead of just instead of changing tires, what they do is they buy winter tires with steel rims. Like this guy had black steel rims, and most dealers, most car dealers, they will keep them for you for free, as long as you pay them to change them up. You know. Let's say in uh, before winter, you go in there and you say, "Hey, here's my my name, John Smith. You guys have my winter tires over here." And so they, you book an appointment, and they take off your your summer or all season tires with their rims, which are usually nice rims, like aluminum rims, and they put on these ugly steel rims. But now you have winter tires. And from here we're on top of a very big hill. It's there's a very good view. There's a city down there. That's Hamilton. Hamilton, Ontario. Like over here, people are crawling. This way, especially when you're heavy loaded, it's a huge hill. And the speed limit is still 80. Like even empty, see I'm empty, it's, it keeps pulling me like crazy. So if I had like a Cat 336 here, I'd be flying at 200 miles an hour unless I'm braking. So yeah, that's the lifestyle, right? You sit at home, you try to find a load, you look two days, nothing. You look three days, nothing. Then day five, boom. You have a load. In 600 meters, keep left at the fork. Follow signs for Toronto, Niagara. 
you worked with this company before so they don't have to do the carrier agreement they just check that you have a, a valid insurance because sometimes let's say I didn't work with somebody in one year and my insurance you know gets renewed every September and so these guys let's say I'm booking a load and they say hey uh, we need your updated insurance certificate and I said no problem but this time I just work with these guys three weeks ago just a different branch of the same uh, company and so they have my insurance on file so once we agreed on a rate and she confirmed that I can deliver before the deadline which is March 1st she said okay I'm gonna send you the load confirmation shortly and that's pretty much all I need to start trucking but then it, if it's because it's the port I also need uh, uh, something like something for the port in this case it's she sent me a delivery order delivery order and then she said something new you have to fill out an inspection sheet Wow that guy has a lot of smoke white smoke coming out of his pipes you know guys what that means that means that he has water and fuel and usually when that happens you lose power you lose power your truck has uh, white smoke happened to me a couple of times and so yeah that's so now I just need my next investment right is the flip axle just need to do the final payment and then I'll have 10 axles and And after that, I don't know. I want to get an extra deck. Either a beam deck or a drop side drill deck. Now, the thing with the beam deck, you can make more money because the loads pay more. But I have zero experience. It can be really dangerous, you know, because you have to center the load perfectly. On the beam because it's the beam is like what 60 inches that's it but so the rates are better the trailer is lighter uh, so those are the advantages so the disadvantages are I'll have to uh, do some quick but serious learning on how to to use that thing without killing myself and then you have to muscle huge timbers each time it's like 12 by 12 timbers because you load uh, you load your load on timbers right not just not just on the deck well sometimes you do right that's why one guy told me besides the timbers you you also need to have some uh, strong plywood because this way when something is super tall and you have to low put it yeah and you have to put it on uh, on straight on the beams then you just use the the plywood but what I would do is I would buy I would probably just buy um, some conveyor belt you know Like I have two, two, I have two small pieces, right? All I gotta do is just maybe buy two or three more, and I just I can put them across, and they're much stronger 
than plywood because plywood would deteriorate pretty fast even from bad weather right or maybe I can get some uh, a rumber you know this new material a rumber R-U-M-B-E-R which would be perfect and you can order them in, in different lengths I mean uh, different height but yeah it's I know it's hard work hard work with the beam but it's cool because you can haul much taller loads right but you just put them on top of the of the of the trailer and then the tracks or wheels are hanging like this you know four or five inches and off you go into the sunset and then laugh on your way to the bank Yeah, my cruise is set at 95 kilometers per hour, 59 mph, and my RPM is 1380 in top gear. That's with a 391 axle ratio and 11R245 tires. So if I had 410, I know the RPM would go up by about 50. So instead of 1380, I would be at 1430. Somewhere around there. Don't quote me. All right, so now we're crossing the big sky bridge which can be pretty dangerous in high wind situations. Those are Hamilton uh, steel mills.